In this section, we will look at setting up Evil Twins and wireless honeypots. A rogue access point is a wireless access point installed on an enterprise network without proper authorization. Rogue APs can be introduced by both internal and external elements interacting with an enterprise. Once the rogue AP is connected, many wireless users on the corporate LAN may accidentally associate with the malicious access point assuming it is a part of the authorized corporate network. Once this happens, the attacker can orchestrate other advanced attacks like man-in-the-middle attacks. We will see a demonstration of MITM attacks in a later section. An evil twin is a special kind of rogue AP, which exactly mimics the network and security parameters of the legitimate Wi-Fi network. Some evil twins take it one step further, where they not only spoof the SSID of the legitimate network, but they also mimic the BSSID or the MAC address of legitimate APs. These breed of evil twins can be very difficult to detect and deter. In our demonstration we will look at how we can create such kind of evil twins by utilizing AP Max spoofing. First let's see the current wireless networks running on the wireless air medium using Aerodump NG. In our case, we are going to consider our physical AP as the legitimate corporate network, having the SSID of test lab. As seen here, we already have a client associated with this legitimate access point. Next we are going to use the Airbase NG utility to create a software-based access point. Once again this utility has a number of options. Here we are going to focus on the dash A and dash C options and the ESSID option to specify the network's SSID. Our ESSID will be the same as the legitimate network, but for now we are specifying an arbitrary MAC address or BSSID. Since our actual access point is using the WPA1 protocol with CCMP encryption, we have used the dash Z option with the number 2, which is used for creating CCMP encryption based soft APs. The encryption scheme being used by the legitimate AP can be seen from Aerodump if there are active clients. Additionally Wireshark can be utilized to identify the encryption scheme being used. Now let's view the output of Aerodump. As we can see, Aerodump can see both access points, the legitimate AP and the rogue AP. Now to lure the client to our rogue AP, we are going to execute a de-authentication attack. If our rogue AP has a stronger signal than the legitimate AP, the client should connect to the rogue AP. In this case the client has associated to our rogue AP, as we can see from the Airbase and G logs. We can take this attack one step further, by spoofing the BSSID or MAC address of the legitimate access point. As you see, this modified rogue AP has even confused the Aerodump tool and it thinks that there is only one AP serving this SSID, even though in reality we have two APs here. This concludes our discussion on wireless evil twins and honey pots. We would highly encourage you to explore and validate these tests in your lab also. In this section, we looked at various attacks on the wireless infrastructure itself. We started with a discussion on default accounts and credentials on access points, and how these can be exploited. The viewer can take these attacks further, by using tools already bundled with Backtrack like Hydra, to brute force the AP's HTTP authentication. After this we looked at practical demonstrations of two Wi-Fi DOS attacks, namely CTS flooding and DAUTH flooding. These kinds of attacks can possibly bring wireless networks to a complete halt. Once again, we encourage you to try out more DOS attacks in your lab environment. For example you can do a broadcast disassociation attack using the MDK3 tool and backtrack. Then we looked at a demonstration on cracking WPS pins, using the wash and reaver utilities. Finally we looked at how to set up fake wireless APs or evil twins and then lure clients to connect towards our rogue APs. In the next section, we are going to look at some advanced wireless attacks focusing on wireless clients which is an area frequently neglected during security policy development and enforcement.